Now that we know some of the basics of HTTP and what a POST request is, we're going to take a look at accepting data from HTTP POST requests that contain JSON in the request body, which is a pretty common scenario, and then how to return JSON. We will learn how to leverage the power of Swift 4 and Codable to make this really easy with Vapor. Let's get started. Head back to the terminal application and let's reopen our Vapor project. Remember, the way to do this is to head back into our project directory if we aren't already there with cd vapor slash hello vapor and then you can run vapor xcode. You can also just run vapor xcode y, so it will open up xcode automatically for you. Open up roots.swift if it isn't already open, and let's create a new root. You'll notice that on the router, all of the existing routes have been defined using the router.get function. This get actually refers to the HTTP method that the route is for, which we learnt about in the previous video. So for this exercise, we want to accept data in a POST request. And to demonstrate this, we'll create a new route at slash info with router.postinfo. We will send the route a request with some JSON containing a name in it. This time, we actually care about the request we are given inside the route handler, which is a bit of code inside our closure. To visualize this, I'm going to use the REST app. This is available as a free download in the App Store and is really useful for sending and receiving requests to APIs. So let's set up our request so we have an idea of what it will look like. In the URL, we will put localhost colon 8080 slash info and set the method to use post. Next, change the request body type to be JSON encoded. It is important to note that usually when sending a request with JSON, we should set the content type header to be application slash JSON, so that the receiving application knows that this request contains JSON. But with rested, it will automatically send this header if we select the JSON encoded option, so we don't need it here. Let's add a single parameter in the request body, which will have a parameter name of name, and a parameter value of Tim, or whatever your name is. We can now see what our JSON will look down here. So head back to Xcode, and we will write our request handler so we can handle this request and return a hello name response. Inside our root handler, we want to be able to get the data from the request, and Vapor makes this really easy by leveraging the power of Codable. Vapor makes heavy use of Codable to conform JSON to and from data with its content protocol. So let's define a new struct that will use this to convert our incoming data into something we can use. We'll create a new struct called info data and make that conform to content. We know that our data will simply contain a name as a string, so we just define that as a property in the struct with let name string. We can then get data to parse out our info data from the request simply with Don't worry about the await call, this will be explained in the next section. It really is that simple. This might seem like a lot for such a trivial example, but this scales up to the point where you can receive really complex nested JSON, and Vapor will parse it all into separate objects for you in one line of code, and return correct error codes when the request doesn't contain all of the necessary information. Now that we have our request data, we can return the name simply with return hello data.name. and then give the compiler a hand by telling it that our closure returns a string. If we build and run our application, we can head back to rested and send the request we had set up and we will see our response. If we want to return a JSON response, which will be common for receiving a JSON request, this is similarly easy. Head back into Xcode, and we can define a new content struct that will be encoded back into JSON and sent back. This time we will see how we can nest different types. Create a new struct called info response that conforms to content, and in here we are simply going to return the request we are given. This is really simple, all we do is define a property request and that will be of type info data. If we go back to our root handler, we can then simply return an instance of our info response struct. 
with the data from the request changing the return type of the closure as we now return a different type. Build and run our app again and head back to rested. If we send our request again, we can see this time we get a JSON response with our request returned.